Hey up. Finally getting round to watching a film that I've weirdly never seen before. Spine number 11, we're checking out Umberto Lenzi's Cannibal Ferox. Also known as Make Them Die Slowly, this is a 1981 Italian cannibal exploitation film. The film stars Giovanni Radice and Lorraine Selle, who you may recognise if you see my review of House at the Edge of the Park that I did for the Vipco review series. Which reminds me as well, I really need to grab that uncut 88 films Blu-ray, because this one was pretty badly cut. So, I've heard a lot about this film throughout my life. Let's see if it lives up to it, shall we? Mike? Just stay put, shit face. What do you want? Where is that motherfucker? I don't know. Do you believe this, baby? Hey, what's that? What? The plot follows three American students who set out to the African jungle to disprove the existence of cannibals. While there, they bump into some diamond and drug smugglers, and they tag along with them for the journey. But one of these new friends, Mike, might actually just be a crazy psychopath who's going to get them all in trouble. I quite enjoyed this one, it's pretty good. Uh, the plot's fine, it does dip a little bit in the middle, but it generally kept my interest. It's grimy, it's gritty, and it feels like a video nasty should. Why'd you kill her, you bastard? Get off my case, motherfucker! Yeah. No, I don't want to die! Don't leave me here to die! Don't leave uh, me here! Come on, Joe, don't worry. Don't leave me. Hell, all I've been doing is tell X and Bogota. Last night, about three students who drove off in their Range Rover and disappeared, and now this Logan jerk? How do you spell Panaguaya? Well, don't worry, I... The acting and dubbing is hilariously awful, leading to some very funny line reads. It's great. I haven't seen a film with dubbing this bad in ages. The real standout for this film, though, is the gore. There's plenty of it as well. There's hands being cut off, eyes being gouged out, there's scalpings, hookings, and two castration scenes. And you see a fair bit of it as well. Decent. The gore itself, the effects, they're as you'd expect, lovely and cheap. Cinematography wise and the look of the film, it's pretty good. Pretty good, some nice shots here and there. The soundtrack though, unfortunately, is a little forgettable and repetitive. Definitely no Cannibal Holocaust soundtrack, unfortunately. Okay, time for a few issues with this film. Surprise, surprise, there's a shit ton of animal cruelty in this. Of course there is, it's a cannibal film. And there's a lot of it here as well. There's monkeys being eaten, turtles being butchered, and alligators being dissected. It's not a great look. If you've seen my Cannibal Holocaust review, you know my opinion on animal cruelty in these sorts of films. It's not great, it's inexcusable and it's pretty disgusting. Another problem with the film, uh, I, I read a few reviews about this on Letterboxd actually as well, it is quite a, it's quite misogynist in parts, it's not great. There's a lot of women being slapped about in this, and the character Mike is supposed to be the villain, but pretty much every time he talks to a woman he calls her a twat, or a twat, because it's American dubbing. Not great, not great. And the third issue with this film is the cut of the film. Now. Nowhere on the packaging does it say that this is uncut, and it isn't uncut, apparently there's two minutes missing. Animal cruelty has been cut out, which, that's fine by me, get rid of it. But, something weird that I noticed is the runtime. It sort of matches the runtime of an uncut version. Now, I did a little bit of digging around online, because I couldn't figure out whether this was uncut or not for a while. Now, I did read a theory online, so please take this with a pinch of salt. 
it's somebody's opinion. But I did notice something as well here. Every now and then, there are shots, usually during the animal cruelty scenes, it's usually a reaction shot, but they're slowed down ever so slightly, and it's really strange. And the runtime matches, so what this person theorises is, is that these shots have been slowed down intentionally to make up the runtime so that the buyer who's thinking, ooh, that matches the uncut runtime. You know, you look on Wikipedia, you see uncut runtime, 93 minutes. This is 93 minutes. If that's the case, and Shameless have been tricking people a little bit, that is not cool. And again, it's just a bit of a shame that it's not the uncut version, really, because they generally boast uncut versions. I don't know. I, it might be wrong, but if it's true, that's not great. <laughs> I watched the only one available on the desk, which is the English dub with, I think there's a little bit of Spanish with English subtitling in there as well. And it's fine for the most part, no complaints. Um, once again as well, with these sorts of films, there is no animal cruelty free one like there was on the Cannibal Holocaust disc. Shame really, they should start doing that more. The print itself is fantastic though. I'd say this was shot on 16mm. It looks fantastic, the colours really pop, and it's still got that grain, so it's got that gritty, horrible feel to it. Just what you want. And there's a little title card again at the beginning of the film, just talking about the restoration and the graininess and stuff like that. On the disc, weirdly, after the two pre-menu trailers, one for Cannibal Holocaust, one for Mountain of the Cannibal God, we get no more trailers on this disc. Really strange, not even for the film itself. But the stuff that we do get on the disc, is actually pretty good. We get one of the last interviews ever with Lindsay, about half an hour long. We get a really cool comparison video which shows the original negative footage compared to the uh, remastered version. Really cool seeing that side by side. We get a photo gallery and we get a really interesting interview with Radice who played, I don't know if I'm saying his name right, Radis Radice? Don't know. But he played Mike in the film. And it's sort of a tell-all interview where he discusses how he hates the film and he hated making it. He talks about how awful it was shooting in the jungle and how he really didn't get on with Lindsay. If you've got a copy of this floating around and you've not seen that interview, it's really interesting and well worth checking out. Oh, my poor feet. Oh, come on, think positive. The river can't be too far now. Letitia is, uh, if you pardon my French, the asshole of the word. <laughs> I'm sorry to say that now that Lancy is not anymore with us, uh, but I had um, a terrible relationship with him. He was uh, exactly what I don't like in people. I mean, he okay, case time. Once again, it is very over the top, and there's some very pompous words here. Nihilistic apotheosis. Sounds really silly on the back of cannibal ferox, I mean... Anyway, uh, there's a comma here where there really should be a full stop, and this bit sounds insane. Pushing the vomit envelope beyond the sick. Really bizarre wording. Outside of that though, it's fine. It's not a numbered version, and the reversible sleeve is a little too similar. <laughs> Overall then, as far as cannibal exploitation goes, it's pretty decent this one. Don't get me wrong, it is no cannibal holocaust, but it's dirty and grimy and I quite enjoyed my time with it. If you can get past some awful animal cruelty, then I'd recommend this. I'd also recommend the disc as well, the print looks fantastic, but it is a cut version. Now, if you're in the market for an uncut version, there are a few options on Amazon for importing. Uh, there's this Dutch version, um, and then I think the three-disc Blu-ray set from Grindhouse Entertainment is uncut as well. But I can't speak for the prints on those. This one looks great. And let's be fair, the only stuff that's missing is animal cruelty, and I can live without that, really. So, pretty decent one this time. I think it lived up to the expectations I'd set for it. 
and I'm very much looking forward to the next episode. Uh, it's a film I've been dying to watch since I bought it. If you're a regular on the channel, you know that I'm quite a fan of So Have E films, and I've heard some great things about this one. So we're going to be checking out Della Morte, Della Moore, The Cemetery Man. Mm -hmm.